Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again.
Howdy, mister. Howdy, Sando. Howdy. Hello. I thought I recognized you, but I wanted to hear your voice after once mistaking Billy be hung for you. We're glad to be with you again, Marshal. I reckon you saw my hand in the paper. Yes, we did. You came to town as soon as possible. Billy be hung escaped us again, but I gather that you've learned something that may lead to his capture. I sure have. When I took horse face and big nose to the territorial prison, the warden told me they'd served a stretch there once before. Billy be hung was in prison at the same time. So was another fellow, Red Jack Mason, who now runs a gambling casino right here in Modoc City. I see. I've been checking up on Red Jack, and I found evidence that he's been helping Billy be hung right along. I figure that owl hoot will come back to him for more help. Well, that's possible. Are you watching Red Jack in his place? Well, I can while taking care of other duties. And I found out that he's been buying some mighty peculiar stuff at different stores here and in other towns. Oh, peculiar in what way? Well, he says he's going hunting. And his purchases add up to three linen dust coats, three pairs of blue spectacles, and three Henry rifles. Oh. No one who knows the West ever buys a Henry rifle for hunting when sharps and Winchesters are available. I never had one, but I know there's 16 shot repeaters and can be fired as fast as you move the trigger guards back and forth. Now, what in tarnation are they good for? Killing men at close quarters. Oh, and Red Jack is up to something. But how do the dusters and blue spectacles figure in it? Well, they can be used as disguises. I'll bet my bottom dollar that Billy be hung has picked up two new partners, and Red Jack is going to outfit them for murder and robbery. Whether or not that's the case, Red Jack should be kept under constant surveillance. I don't know if will take turns watching his casino day and night. You'll be doing me a big favor. But where will you stay? With uh, more Hank's permission, you'll use your stable. <laughs> Later that night, the Lone Ranger and Toto found Ma Hank alone in the hotel kitchen. After congratulating her on her approaching marriage, the masked man told her how she could help him and his Indian friend. Her response was emphatic. Why, sure, you may use the stable, and I'll provide you with feeders. Well, but there is a drawback. Three of my lodgers keep their nags there. I don't want to be seen. Any talk of the presence of a masked man in town might put Red Jack on the alert. Well, if you're careful, you'll be able to keep out of sight. The lodgers don't go to the stable often because my houseboy looks after their horses. Well, thank you, Ma Hank. One of us will be close at hand if you need help. I'm sure they're glad of that. Now, I'll start to watch on Red Jack's place. Uh, Tonto, you better get some sleep. Uh, oh, wait, Tonto. There's a big padlock on the stable door. Here's the key. Uh, what do we do about horses, Kimasabi? Put them in the stable. Silver's been seen by a number of people here and would be recognized. Well, adios, Mrs. Henry. It'll be Mrs. Potts come Friday night. Adios. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm
The stable back of the Henry house is always full of good riding stuff. Likely there won't be anybody around on the wedding night. We're all set. You fellas bed down, and don't show yourselves until it's time to act. Right, oh. sure. While the outlaws settled down to wait, Uncle Homer and J.C. Holcomb, the banker, conferred in the office of the Henry house. The little Easterner, who had gone wild and woolly only to be tamed by the mighty landlady, was asking, How many people live in this town, J.C.? Oh, around 2,000. Mm-hmm. And I want to withdraw 2,000 brand new dollars. Oh, may I inquire? I'm but... worth 200 times that much. Yes, certainly, certainly, Mr. Potts. This is a strange transaction. This has been a mighty wonderful year for me. And I aim to give everyone who celebrates the wedding one of this year's dollars for keepsake. Oh, I see you. Well, I haven't anything like that number of new dollars on hand, but I'll wire Denver and have them shipped out with the mine payrolls, which arrive here at 8 o'clock Friday night. Excellent. I mean, swell. Oh, yes, yes. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger had stationed himself at a point from which he could observe the back door of Red Jack's casino. He was unaware that Billy B. Hung and two Wind River bandits had entered the place only a few minutes before. Remaining at his post throughout the night, he neither saw nor heard anything suspicious. As day broke, Tommy relieved him, and he slipped back to the hotel stable for some much-needed rest. It was a day of hectic activity in the Henry house. Ma Hank was everywhere, doing everything but acting like a conventional bride-to-be. Toward 7 o'clock that evening, Cindy caught up with her for a moment. Ma Hank, it's Tommy address. Oh, my sake, blood. I didn't know it was so late. Oh, they say it's going to be the biggest celebration the town ever had. Oh, the cafes and the stores are going to close down for three hours. Oh, my stars, man. I'll go get ready. A half hour later, with twilight giving way to a moonlit night, Tonto entered the hotel stable. Finding the Lone Ranger prepared to take another turn at watching Red Jack's place, he remarked, No need for a hurricane, Asabi. Casino closed. Looks like everything closed for wedding. Well, where is Red Jack? Him leave. Join crowd going to courthouse. Nobody used back door all day. Maybe Marshal Jim wrong about him. As last man and Indian continue their talk, Billy B. Hung and the outlaw brothers from Wind River crawled out of a cellar window at the casino. Each wore blue spectacles and a duster, beneath which he hugged one of the murderous rifles that were forerunners of a modern submachine gun. Stealing along an alley, they were soon behind the Henry house. There they paused as Billy B. Hung said, Jake, you scout around the stable while Charlie and I watch the hotel. The coast is clear, saddle four horses and bring them out. We'll meet next to one. Maybe the stable's padlock. Use your rifle barrel to tie off the half. Now get going. Oh, well, what's going on in front of the hotel? Oh, that's the wedding party coming out. I sure did. The masked fellow's in the stable. He may get Jake, but we'll get him. Come on. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Man wore blue spectacles and a duster. 
The last man had got saddles on. He may be wearing one of Red Jack's outfits. Him got saddles on four horses. Him, thief. He's leaving out two horses. One is more Hank's pudding foot. What do we do? We'll wait until he takes the other two in power. Red Jack bought three spectacle and doctor outfits. So there must be three in the gang. So we want them all. Mm, right, Ken. Get other horse. Now we go to the back stalls and settle silver and scout. In order to reach the rear stalls from their place of concealment, the Long Ranger and Tonto had a pass through the moonlight, which poured in through the still open door. As they did so, they may be hung in Wind River Charlie, who had reached the stable, while Jake was bringing out the second pair of horses. Saw them. Charlie threw up his Henry rifle. Hey, hey, Tonto, shoot! I'll handle this. Whirling, the masked man and Indian threw their guns. But before they could shoot, the stable door slammed shut. The heavy padlock, which had hung open on the outside half, closed with a snap. Tonto, we're locked in. And one of those men was Billy B. Hung. I knew his voice. How we get out? I'll test the siding for loose or rotten boards while you settle the horses. Me get them ready, Tonto. A few minutes later, as Toto finished saddling Silver and Scout, Billy B. Hung and his confederates rode away from the stable. There's the long lost. Strange that they waited so long. Come, Silver. Horses ready. You find way out? No, not yet. What's wrong, Silver? Him smell smoke. Look back there. Me see fire through crack and wall. The outlaws piled straw against the paddy and set it a fire. That dark stable burning. Look, sighting catch fire. Steady the horses. I'll try some more boards. <laughs> In the meantime, the wedding party had reached the courtroom of Judge Phineas Todd, commonly known as Rope, from the severity of his sentences. Well, Hank, I've been on this here bench for nigh on to 20 years. I never married anyone. It's again my principle. I got a right kind heart. But seeing as how the parson's gone, I hereby sentence you to live together till you're dead, dead, dead. Marshal... Take him away. Come on, Instantly, the courthouse square became a bedlam with war whoops and rebel yells, mingling with a clash of tinware, ringing of cowbells, and roar of guns. No one paid any attention to it, or to the reddening glow behind the Henry house, for bonfires were blazing everywhere. Uncle Homer looked out of a courtroom window and shouted to his bride. All right, better go to the bank for that money. Inside the smoke filled stable, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had tied neckerchiefs over their mouths and noses after soaking the cloths and water from their canteens. As the flame gained headway, the Indian found it increasingly difficult to control Scout and Silver, splendidly trained though the horses were. Uh, soon get the roof. Let him let horses loose. Maybe them kick down fighting. Wait, I think I found something that will help. Yes, this is it. Quick, double my lariat and tie the ends to my saddle horn. Let me do that. What you find? A warped piece of siding. There's a space between it and the setting that I can pass the rope through and make a hit. You got ends tied. Pass me the rest of the rope. Yeah. Ready, Silver? You can still get out of here. There. I made a hit around the setting. Now, big fellow, it's up to you. Taking the great stallion's reins, the masked man led him back until the double's rope was caught. Who, Silver? Who had it, big boy? The mighty horse threw his weight against the rope and lunged. The stable, like most such buildings in the southwest, had been flimsily constructed. Age and climate had made the hand forged nails and spikes so brittle that they snapped. The bottom of the studding to which the lariat was had started to give way. The masked man shouted to Toto. Who's the barrel of your life? Who's the battery ram? This is the more cruel force. As Silver continued to strain, the Indian used his rifle barrel to loosen additional pieces of siding and studding. The dry pine lumber blew only a little before it splintered and broke. A joint which had been supported by the two by fours fell, bringing down enough of the upright tying board to create an opening as large as the door. As the hot air in the stable poured out of the hole, it sucked flames from the burning wall on the other side. Silver's mane was singed. Then the Lone Ranger cut the rope and leaped into his saddle. He's in his Seeing that Tonto had already mounted, he wheeled his great stallion and called, Follow me! Lone Ranger! Get up! The Indian following close behind, the last man urged Silver through the hole in the siding and headed for Main Street, no longer concerned over keeping his presence a secret. Halfway to the courthouse, they encountered a long parade of noisy merrymakers who were bound for the Henry house with Marshal Jim in the lead. The Lone Ranger and Toto pulled up, signaling for the Marshal to halt the procession. Hey, 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 hey,
What's wrong, mister? Billy B. Hung is back. The hotel's table is burning. Get the fire wagon, some of you. You and horse and guns meet me here. We'll patrol the streets and raid Red Jack. Uncle Homer may be in danger. Where is he, Marshal? He and Ma went to the bank. Why is it open tonight? This is the night when the mine payrolls come in. To the bank, fellow. Monster! Yeah, go! Meanwhile, Ma Hank and Uncle Homer had reached the bank in time to watch the Wells Fargo Express agent deliver the money chest. Using a key which he kept in the bank, J.C. Holcomb opened one of the locks while the agents opened a second lock on the reinforced box with a key which they retained for purposes of security. Obtaining a receipt, the expressmen left. Banker Holcomb lifted the lid of the strong box. Now, yeah. there's the silver money you wanted, Mr. Potts. You just let me take those bags, Homer. They're mighty heavy, and, well, you're not all over your wound. Oh, now, look here, boy. Oh, my Open oh, oh, your hands, all you. Get them up. Get them up. This is just the one. Opening fire with his murderous Henry repeater, Jake sprayed the wall above Banker Holcomb's head. The banker was shouting, Don't shoot us! Take the money! I'll be hung if we don't! You're Billy be hung! Well, well, if it isn't pop, this makes it perfect. Jake, watch the street door. Right. Charlie, grab the money. I've got something else to attend to. Yeah, this box is just full of greenbacks. As Wind River Charlie whipped the gunny sack from under his duster, Billy be hung advanced on Uncle Homer, his rifle leveled. You're hard to kill, you runt. But I'd like to see you live with the 16 slugs I'm going to pump into your carcass. Oh, no, you don't. Stepping in front of her diminutive husband, Ma Hank gave him the complete shelter of her massive form. Get away from him or I'll kill you, too. If you shoot her, it's the last man will see that you pay. He won't see anything again. Him and the engine burned in the hotel stable. Now take it. As Billy B. Hung's finger tightened on his rifle trigger, Jake yelled from the front door. The engine's out front. You drop guns. <laughs> Get out the back way. Grab that money, Charlie. Yeah. Drop your rifle. Oops. The masked man's covered us from the back door. Whirling, Billy be hung, tried to bring his heavy rifle to bear on the armed man behind him. With a sweep of one mighty arm, Marge hey, knocked you? the repeater from the outlaw's grasp. Before he could recover from her attack, Uncle Homer had snatched up the fallen rifle, and both Toto and the Lone Ranger were well inside the bank. Jake was shouting, Oh, shoot me, I've got my rifle. Hey, sure did I. Get your hands up. Sure, sure. How'd you fellas get out of that stable? Never mind that. Stand still. I'll pick up those other two rifles before they try any tricks. They may be carrying revolvers under their dusters. Search them, Toto. Uh, As Ma Hank uh, moved to pick up the repeaters which Jake and Wind River Charlie had let fall, she placed herself between Billy B. Hung and both the Lone Ranger and Toto. The masked man saw the danger and called a warning. Back, Mrs. Potts! The newly married landlady straightened, but before she could take a step, Billy B. Hung was behind her. Adjusting a stick shooter from under his duck coat, he shoved the muscle against her back. We're going out of here, masked man. If you want this woman to live, don't try to stop her. Hold your fire, Toto. Uncle Homer, who had been rooted in his tracks by surprise, found himself behind the outlaws as they started to move toward the door. Pick up your rifles, boys, and get mine, too. Right. Reminded that he still held Billy de Hung's rifle, Uncle Homer brought it to his shoulder and aimed at Jake. Stop, you poor cats! Don't touch those rifles! Yeah, Homer, don't you mind me! The little man pulled the trigger, but the cartridge missed fire. Oh. Unfamiliar with the repeating mechanism of a Henry rifle, right. Uncle Homer fumbled with the trigger. Jake was yelling, Shoot him, Billy! The outlaw leader snapped a shot at the bridegroom of a half hour. The bullet cut a flower from Uncle Homer's lapel. Then there was another shot. Oh. Billy be hung, spun, dropping his revolver. The right rifle went off! I shot him! With Ma Hank out of danger, the Lone Ranger and Tonto closed with the Wind River outlaws, who had not managed to retrieve their rifles. The fight was furious but brief. Tonto subdued Jake with an Indian wrestling hold, while the masked man drove a knockout punch to the jaw of Wind River Charlie. Charlie reeled back into the arms of Ma Hank, who neatly deposited him in the money chest and brushed her hand. Mr. Hill and your friend and Homer got the whole darn outfit this time. Say, did you see how Homer drilled Billy the Hung? Yes, I saw. And I reckon I don't have to explain that. Uh, no, Uncle Homer. You're a very fortunate man in many ways. Billy be hung, not dead. Bullet only grazed skull. We captured Red Jack. What happened here? Mr. and Mrs. Potts and the banker can explain. Here's a prisoner for you. Otto has another. Him, yours, Marshal. Oh, Martha, uh, shame this had to happen. My father yeah. for your wedding party and your dress is all right. Oh, Homer and I have had a wonderful time right here. Do you know that your stable burned? We couldn't put in it. No, Mrs. Potts. The outlaws stole Puddin' Foot before trying to burn Toto and me. You'll find him outside with the other horses they took. Well, then it don't matter. Uh, 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 Billy uh, be hung is coming too. But I'll get you for shooting me. I'll get that masked man, too. You'll sure have to wait a long time. 
Even if you haven't murdered anyone, you'll get a life sentence from Judge Phineas Todd. Mrs. Potts, I hope that you and Uncle Homer enjoy many happy years together. Why, thank you, mister. Are you leaving? Yes. Tell and I are needed elsewhere. Adios, what? adios. Adios, 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 Adios. Uncle Homer, did you actually shoot Billy Dahmer? Yep, but it was an accident. The cartridge in the barrel of that Henry rifle wouldn't explode. The second time I tried it, I got so excited, I pulled on the trigger guard before I pulled on the trigger. And I'll be damned if it didn't shoot then. <laughs> Uncle Homer, you reloaded the rifle when you pulled on the trigger guard. That's how a Henry repeater worked. Well, now, don't you ever tell Ma I didn't know that. She thinks I'm a hero like the masked man. Uh, this is Potts, sir. I missed the masked man once at your hotel, but you didn't tell me anything about him. Who is he, anyhow? <laughs> Every banker ought to know who protects them from the worst crooks in the West, so I'll tell you. He is the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger.